So, I put it to you that the fact that the society is in need of re... Uh. Monsieur de Mirabeau. Uh, the, oh, uh, 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 the demon can speak? Speak, then! Has my time come? I do not know. My life is in your hands. It's not worth much. Do what you will with it. I seek Monsieur de Volcanson. He holds the secret to the tireless automats. And you think you'll find him here? In my quarters? Tell me, who is your master? Aren't you one of Cagliostro's creatures? I serve only the Queen. Ah, the Queen. Well then, that's something else altogether. I found this message in Monsieur de Volcanson's carriage. He didn't receive it. That is most worrying. Eugène and I are old friends. I was hoping he would be able to tell me what the deuce is going on. Of course, I doubt he had a hand in this odious display of force. But he spent years in service to the king and his projects. Projects whose macabre ends we're only now discovering. Where could Monsieur de Volcanson have gone? How should I know? The situation is dire out there. Everyone is taking shelter wherever they can. Let me think. I know that he and Monsieur Bailly, the astronomer, are close. Perhaps Monsieur Bailly knows more? Where can he be found? He must have taken refuge in his observatory at the Louvre. Otherwise, I doubt he is still alive. He and his associate Lavoisier, the astronomer and the chemist, they were once the pride of the court, but have fallen out of favor. Too close to the common people, it would seem. It's as if only Volcanson managed to stay in the king's good graces. Sic transit gloria mundi. Who is this Cagliostro? <laughs> you feign ignorance. I do not know. Then you should know that Cagliostro is the king's right-hand man. He claims to be a magician, and he is a self-styled count. A charlatan who is more powerful than a minister. Precisely. I've heard the most troubling rumors about him. He is supposedly the one who enabled the king to breathe life into these killing machines that no key need wind. I admit it sounds highly improbable. And I wouldn't believe a word of it if I didn't have proof standing right before my eyes. Now that I think about it, as you can see, my servants have all abandoned me. And I will soon follow their lead. Those poor people hoped to escape the city while there was still time. A dire vrai, I fear I shall never see them alive again. Before she left, the housekeeper gave me this key. It opens the gate that leads to the Louvre if you are foolhardy enough to attempt it. I found a note written by Eugène de Vaucanson. He mentions the death of the Dauphin at Meudon. What happened that night? How should I know? The child passed away at Meudon. I was in Versailles. Eugène de Vaucanson told you nothing. The only thing he was willing to tell me was that something terrible had happened and that the circumstances leading to the Dauphin's death were not exactly as described. One thing for certain is that he was extremely upset about what happened, so much so that he refused to spend a single day more in the King's service. But he has apparently changed his mind. Besides the King and Monsieur de Vaucanson, who else witnessed these events? Well, if they followed protocol, Monsieur Le Monnier the first physician to the king. He must have performed the autopsy on the child. Where can I find him? He lives in Versailles, near the chateau. But he has a practice here in Paris, on rue Saint-Thomas d'Enfer, in the quartier Saint-André-des-Arts. No one, not even the king, 
can stop the representatives of the people from continuing their work. Wherever its members are gathered, the Assemblée Nationale lives. That is why we swear never to part and to gather wherever circumstances require it until a constitution is established for the kingdom. Come here, my enemy. I say no you. Monsieur, we have just burned our bridges. Nothing and no one can prevent justice from triumphing in this kingdom. Let's not claim victory too soon, Maximilian. And don't forget what we agreed on, if things were to take a turn for the worse. Last time we shall meet. From now on, we shall do without your help. Eh bien, are you waiting for an invitation to leave? Your Majesty, dare we ask what brought this disgrace upon us? The Count's work has given me complete satisfaction. Your essences and optics are no longer of any use to us. Rejoice, learned scholars. You may now dedicate yourselves to the cause of the Vanupier. Just a moment. Are we being rebuked for our actions at the Estates General? But, Your Majesty, you are the one who convened this assembly. Leave here at once, Monsieur, before you say anything you might regret. His Lordship, the King's brother, has answered my message. He has agreed to see me, despite the circumstances. The Comte de Provence? Do you trust him? If he still has any influence over the king, we must try. I shall leave immediately for the Luxembourg Palace. Be careful, Antoine. I implore you. The whole quartier is ablaze. released me from this nightmare but how did your master send you my name is not Ludia monsieur I'm called Aegis and I serve only the Queen oh. my poor Ramfon Ludia Aegis and yet I fear that you are neither it is of no importance monsieur I have a mission to accomplish where is Monsieur de Vaucanson hiding? Oh, he is hiding, as you say, in a cell in the Bastille prison. Shackled hand and foot. That is how our good king has decided to reward his most faithful servant. As for you, my child, I can't be sure, but I think there is a truth you must uncover. Find your way to Monsieur de Vaucanson's home. It is in the Faubourg Saint-Germain, east of the Invalides. Here, 
is the key to the gate. When we meet again, we will have the answers we seek. Your colleague, Monsieur Leboisier, do you know where he is? He went to the Palais de Luxembourg, despite the danger. Why? He hoped to convince the Comte de Provence to speak to his brother, the King, and have Eugène de Vaucanson released from prison. But he hasn't been seen since, nor given any sign of life. What did you see and hear before you regained consciousness? I... I don't know how to describe it. A vrai dire, I was in a sinister and icy place. Et puis, ah, it's all a blur, a poisonous feeling of destructive power. Somewhere between a dream and reality, orders whispered in my ear. Poor, terrified people falling at my hand. I don't know if I was given some powerful drug, or if my mind was truly lost in the ether. If this is the case, the phenomenon should be studied. But can it be reproduced? For now, I will attempt to reach the safe haven where those who oppose the king swore together in hopes that any of them escaped the massacre. 